Okay, today I want to show you how to tie a Waddington. Now this is really a salmon or a sea trout fly. It's very good for sea trout, um, but it's used a lot in Scotland and uh, in the north of England as a salmon fly. Now the, what, the name Waddington, this was invented by a guy called Richard Waddington. I don't know much more than that, but it's not nothing new. It's been around a long time. And the name is derived from the shank. Now this particular shank I'm going to show you is one and a half inches long. And you see, this is how it is. And there's a little gap here. Can you see that gap there? Where a treble hook gets inserted, which I'll demonstrate to you in a moment. Um, it comes in various sizes. This is one and a half inches. This one is one and a quarter inches. And there's one here which is three quarters of an inch. Um, you see the little gap? That's important to, to, to show you that little gap there. Um, I will use a one inch to demonstrate this particular fly. And the fly I'm going to tie is um, one very popular in mid Wales. It's called a dovey black and orange. The black refers to the body and the orange refers to the uh, throat tackle. Now you can tie this in any fly, you, any type you like, a single, double or what have you. We are trying to get away from treble hooks but I just want to demonstrate it to you to show you uh, so that at least you know about it. Now I'm going to use a size uh, 12 treble for this and the first thing you do this little this piece of rubber will uh, be you you'll see this in use first thing I do is I measure it I get it down to where I want it which is just a, about the same size as the shank of the treble hook so I'll cut it off there and I'll, I'll remove this piece of rubber for now and keep it to one side to be used in, in a moment or two now that rubber comes in various sizes and in various colours. This is black, there's a yellow piece there, clear, and there's a bright orange. And the one I'm, I used, uh, I will use for this fly, is a sort of clear orange. <coughs> now, the um, first thing we do is we're going to put a, a tail on this fly, and the tail will go on the treble, like this. get my silk ready and first of all I'll put a little bit of a foundation on this treble when using treble hooks always got to be careful you don't get um, hooked up on them get stung on them because it can happen just pulled off some fibers for the tail and I'm putting them on like this couple there like that draw them down you can use various tails but for this particular fly the dovey black and orange I tend to stick to the orange here I'm going to put some more on in the other gap of the treble I line them up roughly they're about there that's the tail I'll cut off these surplus fibers This may look fiddly, but it's fairly straightforward, but it does take a little bit of time to tie the fly, but it is worth tying. Okay, now that's going to be our tail. I will put a little bit of varnish on this silk to stop it rotting. If 
before I finish off working on this hook. Now, one advantage, I'm just going to put a whip finish on here to finish it off. It looks a little bit untidy, but that will not be showing. That um, rough part will be hidden under the rubber, and you, you, you'll see that in a moment. That's just a whip finish on to secure this, and I tie this off. Okay, now one advantage of the Waddington is the hook. If the hook ever gets blunt, it can be changed. You don't need to discard the whole fly. Um, now, the hook gets fitted on the fly through this little gap here. Um, excuse me going out of sight. I'll try to do it in view for you. goes on like this, like that. Can you see how that's on there? Now to prevent it coming out, and I, I'm uh, putting it back in the vise, like this. Not everybody does what I'm going to do. I'm now going to put some silk to keep that gap there, to close the gap. Um, some people just leave it, they don't put any silk, they, and I don't think they've had any problems, but it's something that I feel happier about. I put some varnish on the gap there. And I'm now going to use a heavier silk. In fact, this is the silk for putting on uh, rings on a rod. It's rot proof. You'll see now, I'm just putting a few wines on here like that and I'll put a whip finish there as well like this one two three when you're doing things like this beware of that treble you don't catch yourself on it or as my friend Gilbert says, watch that sting in the tail. Okie doke. Now, that's the hook on the shank. Again, to stop it rotting, although it is a rot-proof silk, it's too thick for tying the fly with. I do that as a belt and braces. Now at this stage I remove it from the vise. I would normally let it that varnish dry but I'm going to now slide on this rubber. And you see what I'm going to do. The rubber now goes right down. I push it over the varnish right down the shank now th this is where it will end up, but at the moment I'm going to take it all the way down to give me room to tie the fly. So I push it all the way down and that's exposed the shank for me to tie. Now if you, I tie now from this part on, let me get my needle to point, the body of the fly goes up here and this is all separate in a way. And if you want to change the hook at a later stage, if it gets blunt, you just have to push down the rubber, cut that silk, um, put another hook on without disturbing the, the rest of the body of the fly. Okay, now while it's like that, I'm going to put it back in the vise and tie the fly. Hope this is becoming clear to you. Right, um, <clears throat> the dovey black and orange. Um, I'm going to, um, don't need to be too fast about the body because I'm going to put on a wool body. So I just do the silk down here like this and I take the silk down towards the bend, nip off the surplus and I take the silk down to that little gap. I don't want to exceed, I don't want to pass that gap because that's where 
if we remove the treble we don't want to disturb anything there and I now tie in the rib I'm going to use a wide silver rib because it stands out well you can use a braid if you wish but the silver does look well as usual wrong color face in me so that when it gets turned over it'll be right bind that down and now I'm going to use some wool for the body cut off a piece of wool three ply wool I'll take out one of the strands like this just draw it down keep drawing it down and there's one of the strands of ordinary knitting wool and I'll tie this on now this fly can be weighted you can put um, lead on it a strip of lead it can go under the body here if, if you need to I suggest if you do put uh, weight on always put it underneath it helps the fly to swim the right way up but this is going to have a hair wing and the hair wing always has a certain amount of buoyancy which tends to encourage the fly always to swim the right way up okay I'm winding the black wool body a single strand as you can see touch in turns up towards the eye I like the wool body on a wet fly I think it looks good most people use floss and nothing wrong with floss but from past experience wool does absorb a bit of uh, water which helps to add a little bit of weight to the fly not that I want a heavy fly I like a fly to be free and easy when it's fishing okay we got it there I'm going to tie it off two turns to hold it while I secure it a bit better than that and that's it and now I'm going to do the rib Try to concentrate on getting even ribs like this, even winds. Up towards the eye where I now secure it and tie it off and cut it off. Okay, so we've got the treble on and we've got the body. We're now going to put on some hackle, a beard hackle, orange again, beard hackle, before we put the wing on. The bottom of the fly is facing me so I'm gonna give a quick I'll put a couple of these on because it's a little bit sparse so I'll put a couple of bunches on maybe even three No, two is enough. Cut off the roots. And I'm looking at the bottom of the fly. At this stage, I touch the roots 
with some varnish may not always be necessary but that runs in and helps to secure them put on a few wines now I'm going to put on the wing now when I put the wing on I put the fly this way up so I can see it better and I'm hoping that you can also it's a dovey black and orange I don't use a black tail because the stoat tail that I've got is too short I find the brown mink tail is just as good it's a dark dark brown almost black I've taken some good sea trout on it and uh, I'm positive it'll do the job if you get black use black but if you've got a very dark brown don't worry about it at all as they say the fish don't seem to mind I'm just taking the the bump the fur out of the roots of the hair because that'll only give you a bulky head and won't do a lot of good at all now I'm going to position this you've got to bear in mind that the hook makes this fly longer and we want the tail to come back into the towards the end of the fly not towards the end of the body because it's got this as I say the hooks here which makes the fly longer now a lot of people prefer the Waddington shank to the tube fly and the reason is the tube fly can be a bit light a bit too light I've cut off those roots you can weight a tube fly with lead or various ways um, but I, I, I don't like a fly that's weighted too much because um, I prefer to use an intermediate fly line and when the fly swings around with the current it ducks and dodges and it looks more alive if it's got lead in it or a lot of weight it can be uh, you know it just looks dull do you, you notice I put some weight uh, varnish into the roots of the wing now the other thing is some people put uh, jungle cock eyes on uh, I don't think they're really necessary now I've got the varnish mixing in with the silks that I'm tying in with the roots of the hair and in with the, the hackle okay I'm going to do it whip finish finish it off one two three big fly I'll give it five draw it up cut the silk now that's how a fly finished really apart from varnishing the head now I'm not going to varnish the head for the moment I'm going to take the fly out of the vise and show you what I do next normally I would varnish the head of the fly but now I'm going to show you what I do with this rubber tube simply slide it up over the silks onto the shank and this keeps the treble hook in line with the body just like that go carefully and it'll come just take your time and that's our fly that's it finished apart from varnishing the head which I will do in a moment or two now you will 
there's a little stray. You will remember that I said, if you need to change that hook, you push the rubber back down and carefully cut that silk, the silk that's over the shank, and you can put a new treble hook on, you can put a, ha a tail on it if you want to, uh, and then you can, it's a bit fiddly, but you'll get it back on. But the Warrington is, is a very good fly. Um, it's got, to me, the ideal combination of weight, because of the shank, weight and um, liveliness in the water. So you now see I'm varnishing the head. So you now know the fly is 100% finished. That's it. That is the Waddington. It can be tied in any pattern you like, really. Um, but that particular one is a Dovey Black and Orange. I tie it in uh, teal, blue and silver. I also tie a Butcher like it. And I tie an Alexander like it. Um, it, it. It is a very good fly. I hope you. I hope that has benefited you a bit there. And I thank you for. Watching.